it's determine a plus b if a and b are acute angles okay and the sine of a plus the sine of b equals the square root of 3 divided by 2 and the cosine of a minus the co minus the cosine of b equals the square root of one half. What I noticed right away that they're both square roots, and um, I don't really like them. But that's something that I should have noticed when I was doing this problem. So when I was doing this problem. What I wanted to do was I wanted, if I were to square both equations, I, I, I just did not look at the side. I forgot about it. It was non-existent to me. I was looking at the sine of A and sine of B and cosine of A minus cosine of B. I thought that, so, if I, I, I want to come, if I want to get them together, it's a system of equations. I want to get them together somehow. I want to square them. Because we know that sine squared of a plus sine squared of plus cosine squared of b or sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a equals one, and same for b. So I want to try to square them and add them. Um, that's just my intuition. Your intuition might be a little different. I might say maybe you want to square them and subtract, or maybe you want to square it because there's square roots just hanging around. So yeah, we do that. Um, <clears throat> um, if we square both of them, then we get sine squared of a plus sine squared of b plus 2 sine a sine b equals 3 halves okay so now the right hand side is a little better um same thing with the bottom equation cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b plus or sorry not plus minus 2 cosine a cosine b equals so one half yeah nice okay now the whole reason i add i i, I squared them is so i can add them so now if you didn't understand what i was saying earlier you'll understand now if i add them you'll get sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a one sine squared of a plus cosine squared of b also one doesn't matter what the angle is it's just that you need to have that expression now we're gonna get a little more spicy up in here so two sine of a sine of b minus two cosine a cosine b i can factor out it too so two times sine of a sine of b minus cosine a cosine b all right so now that's equal to three s plus one half is two Alrighty, mighty. So now this is two. Subtract two on both sides. Um, this gets out and this becomes zero. We can divide by two, and that still is zero. So now, notice that sine of a sine of b minus cosine a cosine b is actually just. Wait. Yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah. That's um negative. Cos oh god negative cosine of a plus b and so that is equal to zero um yeah also and so the if it, if you can divide by negative one by negative one so or you can just add cosine of a plus b to both sides and you're gonna get it's just that cosine of a plus b equals zero. So yeah, yeah. You can also notice that if you were to add cosine a cosine b to both sides, you get sine of a sine of b equals cosine a cosine b. Then subtract sine of a sine of b on both sides, you're gonna get the same thing. So that's really spicy, but I mean it's not spicy enough to solve the equation. So we gotta spice it up a notch. We know that a plus b is 90 because they're acute angles. So it's 90 degrees, nice. Cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. And that's what you were asked, what's A plus B? So we did it. Nice job, guys. So that's nice, um, but mm, I'm not going to see many of those in the competitions. Although it was a nice problem-solving problem. Oh, by the way, feel free to answer them yourselves and check. I I prefer you guys answer these by yourselves first and then see because then there's no point in this video so yeah um
Hmm. Now we're gonna spice, spicy, 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 spicy like my ricey. Um. Find a good problem. All right. This is more of an algebra problem, but um, just try to solve it. I don't care if you use algebra trigonometry. I don't care if you use calculus. 7 on this. Who cares? Just solve the freaking equation. a squared plus b squared equals 1. Because this is a trick, uh, c squared plus d squared equals 1. Because it's a trigonometric uh, problem solving video. So yeah, I'm going to be using trig for this. But uh, try to use, use it however way you want to. Uh, hopefully you can see why I can use trig on this. Anyways, um... So what is this equal to? All right. So now let's do this. So we look at it, or actually you can first look at it. Blah blah blah. All right, nice. All righty. So now let's do this problem, bro. All right. So now um, the, where I see the trick is that a squared plus b squared equals one. That's what I first noticed because. I don't know. It's I was on the it was uh the topic of trig and I thought oh I have to use trig. So let's use trig. Let's say a equals sine of a and then um b equals cosine of b or a. So then um c equals sine of b a and then d equals cos or sorry sine of uh, a, C equals sine of B, and then D equals sine, cosine of B. Alright, so now that's pretty cool. Um, the first two equations are, I mean, define how we got the variables we need to plug it in. Now the second equation, that's where the spice comes to life. We got sine of A, sine of B, minus cosine A, cosine B. Oh, we have just seen this equation before equals one half you can do many things here you can um you can notice that this is negative cosine of a plus b you can add cosine of a b cosine of a cosine of b um subtract cosine of a sine of b subtract one half on both sides and then boom you get cosine of a plus b equals negative one half or a negative cosine of a plus b equals one half or, so now, um, we can actually define our variables differently and get a better equation. Oh, by the way, um, we have the negative cosine of a plus b equals one half, or, or, yeah, so, or, um, cosine of a plus b, which is much more better to deal with, is equal to negative one half. So you can do that, or we can actually just define them differently. We can say that a equals cosine of a, and b equals sine of a, so then and then c equals cosine of a, or, or c equals cosine of b, and then d equals sine of a. So we switch c and d, and we switch a and b, and then we get this um, same thing. I think, right? So then, um, yeah, I don't know. So then just, we just do this. Now, what you do is we say that, okay. Cosine of a plus b, or yeah, no, we get a we get a cosine of a plus b equals one half, but then a d plus b c would be like negative or something, or the negative version, or whatever. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with this route. So now we solve this. We know that a plus b equals. So now that's equal to well, we know that cosine of sixty degrees equals one half. So to get it to negative, we do pi minus that angle. Or, 180 minus that angle, so we get 120 degrees. Um, so yeah, um, so now, um, we're just a little stru stuck, struck, and uh, yeah, let's. So we want to find 80 plus BC. What is what is that really trying to find? Well, 80 plus BC is well, let's look at variables well it's equal to sine of a times cosine of b plus cosine of a times sine of 
B. Wow, that's a sign of A plus B. I know it's so spicy. Maybe because A plus B equals 120. We can actually solve this freaking problem. So sine of 120. We know that sine of 120 equals sine of 180 minus 120. So that's equal to sine of 60. So the answer is root 3 over 2. So um, let's just check that. Hmm, spice in my rice. Um, did I get this right? Uh, I think I got this right. All right, we got this right. That's so nice and amazing. Now, let's instead of spicing our solutions, let's spice the problems so that our solutions get more spicy. Um, what I'm trying to say is that if you if you were just directly if you were just if we were to just directly spice our solutions, it would go up linearly. Linearly. But if you were to spice the problems, then our solutions would spice exponentially, if you know what I'm saying. So, here's a spicy problem. Um, so yeah, now uh, let's do, 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 um, you guys know what do do is? It's poop. Oh, sorry, um, uh, where's the spicy problem? Give me the spicy problem. Spicy, spicy, and my ricey. Um, hmm. yeah, let's do this. So, now, I'm gonna be bringing in tangents, and we're gonna be bringing in not-so-nice angles. Oh, we're not trying 10 of degrees. 10 of 10. Degrees times a ten of twenty degrees times dot 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 times a ten of eighty degrees. Wow, we expect this to be a nice answer because um yeah we just think it's gonna be a nice answer because it's a math problem and so they wouldn't make it rude, right? So yeah, let's do this. Um, so. Oh yeah, uh, we could actually be using wishful thinking. Uh, if you don't know what wishful thinking is, oh, it's not a big deal. Just get smarter and you'll know it. It's just where you wish something, like for example, you wish it's going to be a nice answer. So you put it in a nice answer form. I'm getting completely off topic, but let's say we had the square root of A plus B root C. Um... And we're like, oh, I wish I could simplify that into the square root of x plus the square root of y. That'd be so cool. Then you solve this equation, and then you solve for x and y by getting x plus y equals this, x, y equals this, and then solve that using a quadratic, and then boom, you solve it. So wishful thinking is actually pretty helpful. I'm going to make a video on that, maybe. Maybe not. So now, let's do this. So, um, so I don't really like tangents. I like sines and cosines. Well, actually, I don't like them either, they're just easier. Okay, sine of 20. Actually, I'm gonna write, I feel like writing out the whole thing, so let's do that. And I don't, and um, hopefully, you know it's degrees by now, so I'm not gonna write that. Sine of 20. Oh, god. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah blah blah. So now that divided by the cosine of ten, cosine of thir uh, twenty, cosine of thirty, cosine of forty, cosine of fifty, cosine of sixty, cosine of seventy, cosine of eighty. Let's go. So now let's do this. So, <sighs> um. We could go about this in many, many ways, so, but I'm going to do this a really spicy way. I know that 10 and 80, right, these last and first, usually when there's a pattern, especially an arithmetic one, yeah, this is, if this is an arithmetic one, look at the first and the n term and solve, and yeah, use that. 
So now we know the ten plus eighty is ninety. Uh, same for the cosines. So now what I'm gonna use is that the sine, or yeah, the cosine. Yeah, the cosine of. Yeah, I'm just gonna write them both out. So now the sine of theta equals the cosine of ninety minus theta, where theta is in degrees. Um, and then same for the cosine. Cosine theta equals sine of ninety minus theta as well because they both have a yeah whatever. So we're gonna use that. Uh, the top becomes sine of ten, sine of twenty, sine of thirty sine of 40 we're actually just going to be using that for the okay so there's eight terms right so we're going to be using it for the last four terms on the top and we're going to be using it for the first four terms on the bottom but wait ah freaking up stick that would actually be terrible don't put freaking a stick so yeah now poop on us okay what was i oh, what am i doing God, I'm going. Ah, uh, okay. So now, yeah. So ten to forty. I'm going completely off branch. Get it? Cause I could also say completely off stick. So now let's do this. So cosine. So um, if we apply it, like if we apply it, uh, big brain and glee, we're gonna get times the cosine of ten, cosine of twenty, cosine of thirty, cosine of forty. So that divided by so now we apply it smartly. Oh wait, I'm sorry no. Oh yeah, sorry, yes. Um so now um sign of Hmm, that's really spicy. So what do I do now? Oh I just leave this the same. Okay, yeah, let's just leave that the same guys. All's good, all's wells. Oh god, I just made a terrible reference. Anyways, cosine of 20, cosine of 30, cosine of 40. So now we apply it smartly again, and now we're, we can apply it smartly. Earlier we were just faking it, and weren't applying anything. This is sine of 10, sine of 20, sine of 30. I know I'm sloppy, but just shut up and deal with it. Now you have a nice thing. Hey, sine of 10, sine of 10. Whoa, they cancel. What a coincidence. Sine of 20, sine of 30, sine of 40. Whoa, what a coincidence. Same with the cosines. Nice. We had a really lucky guess to use that. And, oh, it's equal to 1. What a coincidence. Oh, my God. We're just so smart because we just guessed the best technique. And the truth is we did not guess. What we did was we just looked at a pattern. And we saw that pattern, and we saw that, so yeah, yeah, we just need to know what to use at the right time. And that's one of the hardest things in competitions, you need to know what to use. So now, that's cool, and it's really spicy, if you know what I mean. It's just so spicy. Um... Hmm. So now let's solve some more problems, maybe. So yeah, um, these types of problems are really uh, nice to know about. So yeah, um, hmm. I'm gonna do one more problem. So yeah, I want this time. I really want you to try it, like. Yeah, because it's from the Amy. So Amy is a big boy. And, I mean, not as big boy as I am. I want Putnam, but, oof, Amy is not something we're going to be doing. Because the people on the team at this channel apparently like to quit on a lot of things before trying. So, yeah, our equation is cosine of 1. Uh, but I'm just not going to put degrees in. I'm going to assume... That you know everything's in degrees because I'm telling you right now. So cosine of one plus cosine of two cosine of three plus cosine of four. Actually, you know what? Uh, was anyways gonna be a dot dot dot. So I'm just gonna put it here. Cosine of one, cosine of two, blah, blah blah. So now that plus the cosine of forty-four divided by. 
Same thing with the signs. Sign of one plus sign of two plus dot 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 plus sign of forty four. So now, so now um, uh, yeah. So now let's do this. So um, hmm. how can we do this? Well, we do this a similar thing that we did last time. One plus 44 is 45, nice angle, nice, 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 spice, 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 and my rice, so let's do this, um, we can actually just, instead of combining them, like, all together, we can combine 1 and 44, 2 and 43, so on, and we get a little, and same with sign, sign of 44, sign of 2, sign of 43, blah, 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 so now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like so yeah we're just gonna solve it now. So we're gonna use product to s uh, sum the product, right? So we know that the cosine of um 44 plus the cosine of one equals two times the cosine of 45 over two times the cosine of 43 over two. Why is that? Because um, the product exists, exists, exists. All right, so that's nice. Now cosine of 43 plus cosine of two equals same thing, right? Don't you think it's gonna be the same thing and all work out perfectly? Oh, 45 over two. Oh, this one's also gonna be 43 over two and it's 41 over two and we're all screwed now. Um, if we keep going, we actually just we're we're actually going down by one every time on the on the second cosine and the angle and but then with the first cosine and the two we're saying the same. So now last one's gonna be twenty three plus cosine twenty two because there that's in the middle. So now that's equal to two cosine of forty five over two cosine of one half. Alright, so now um uh, so now, um, we can do the same thing with the sign, right? So now, we, we actually look, we are, it actually looks terrible, and we're like, oh god, it's ugly. So, now let's actually just do the same thing with the signs. Or actually, um, I'm just gonna write it out here. The top is gonna get... Um, if you add all of them and then factor out a 2 cosine of 45 over 2. Then we're gonna have the cosine of 1 half plus the cosine of, um, what is it next? 3 halves, I'm guessing. Plus the cosine of 41 over 2 plus the cosine of 40. Three over two. We can use pro some of the product again, or we can use some manipulation. But I'm just gonna leave it there for now, and you're gonna see why. Trust me. So now with we can do the same thing with signs. Oh God, sine of 44 plus the sine of one equals. So now um, we hope for the luck, and we might get some bucks. Um, maybe we can throw in the ducks. So now. It's the same thing with signs. And what we get is we get 2 sine of 45 over 2 cosine. Hey, cosine, nice. 43 over 2. So now the next thing, sine of 43 plus sine of 2 equals, equals 2 sine of 45 over 2. Hey, we're getting those 45 over 2s again, but what was signs? Hey, cosine of 41 over 2. If we actually keep going, nice pattern, actually. So, actually, same pattern with the cosines at the end. Sine of 23 plus sine of 22, that's equal to 2 sine of 45 over 2. Oh, God. Cosine of 1 and a half. I don't know where this accent came from, but it's, oh, it's gone. So... I was just so focused, I guess. So now we add them all up, 
of fat gratitude. Two sine of 45 over 2. We get 2 sine of 45 over 2. So that times, same thing, right? Cosine of 1 half. Um, so that plus cosine of 3 halves. We're, uh, notice how in the first one we were doing the cosines, uh, we went 43 over 2, 41 over 2, 1 half, right? But then we were adding went but then when we, when we were adding them, we went cosine of one half, it's cosine of three halves. We and the and with this we're going up to down, with this we're going down to up. And same with the signs. So hey, what a coincidence. It's the exact same freaking thing as the one that we had above. So now guess what guys? Boom chica boom. And so that is going to get us, so now we're going to actually cancel out that too. And we're going to get the cotangent of 45 over 2. Are we done? No, we're not. We can't really put that as an Amy answer. I, th I don't think so. I'm not sure. So let's just evaluate that. That is equal to 1 over the tangent of 45 over 2. So now, yeah. When I have reciprocal trig stuff, I like to convert it. To normal trig stuff. Tangent, we can, we can convert to sine and cosine. And then we can do the half angle identities. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do the half angle identity for tangent. So, I hope I cover that. I don't think I really covered that. So, um, in fact, I'm just going to do it now. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to de derive it really fast. Skip to, like, just keep skipping until... This mark is erased. Uh, skip until this mark is erased. So now this is the tangent of the single. Blah 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 blah. We know this, right? So now that's equal to um the top is um plus or minus square root of um. So yeah, this is equal to plus or minus square root of um. Uh, oh, something over 2, is it? I think it's 1 minus cosine of theta over plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. So now notice that this is actually, because we have a plus minus and plus minus, if the top is plus and the bottom is minus, it's going to be minus. If So if they're the same, it's going to be plus. If they're different, it's going to be minus. So it's just going to be 1 plus or minus, depending on those. But that doesn't actually matter because if the theta over two is wait never mind whatever forget it um so now we just do this and we're gonna get this equal to plus or minus square root of one minus cosine of theta over two over one plus cosine of theta over two so that's equal to um, one minus cosine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta, and so that is equal to plus or minus square root of, we um, do some stuff, 1 minus cosine squared of theta over, um, more. so now, what am I doing? So I know the bottom is 1 minus cosine squared of theta, and the top is 1 plus, yeah, but what I did was I multiplied by 1 minus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta, the top is going to become 1 plus cosine squared of theta minus 2 cosine theta. And so that spice is going to get less spicier because 1 minus cosine squared of theta is actually just, um, so yeah, that's just sine squared of theta. And so the, when, when you take the square root of sine squared of theta, you get sine of theta. So something over sine of theta. Now the square root of the top is really just... Wait, why did I expand that? Sorry, I didn't have to expand that. It's 1 minus cosine of theta squared. And the square root of that is 1 minus cosine theta. Oh yeah, that's really nice. We can actually multiply by um, something. 1 plus cosine of theta, I think, on the top and bottom, and we can actually get, um, sine of theta plus sine of theta, cosine theta, and then sine squared of theta or something, and then, 
Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Diamonds in my underwear. And um, hmm. So yeah, um, that's really spicy. Wait, did I do this right? Let me just check. Um, okay. Why am I closer? Let me sign. Um. Hmm. Right, so 1 minus cosine, yeah, that's also equal to sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. See if you can find out why. Uh, I'm just actually going to do it myself. Um, well, actually, just find a proof of this. Um, I'm going to prove that it's true. Um, sine of, if you do cross multiplication, you get sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta, 1 minus cosine squared of theta, sine, squ sine squared of theta, so boom. Yeah, nice. Alright, so now, we're done with the proof. So now, um, yeah, now let's move on to this. So this is equal to 1 over, um, so yeah, that's equal to, uh, 1 over the sine of 45 over... One plus a cosine of 45. I'd rather have you use one of them. Sometimes I'm going to use the left one, sometimes I'm going to use the right right one. Right one actually uh, has pluses and sine on the top, so that's actually pretty good. So now that is equal to um, reciprocate it, and we're going to get uh, one plus cosine over sine. We evaluate them, we get... 1 plus root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, and that's equal to 2 plus 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, and that's equal to root 2 plus 2 over root 2. And so that, my friends, you're not my friends, I don't have friends. So now that is equal to 1 plus 2 over root 2 which is equal to root 2. So that's our answer. So that's really nice for an Amy, Amy problem. I want to be honest, this is one of the easy Amy problems. I know, call me um, bragging, but I'm the best. And so, yeah. Nice. We did it, guys. Nice. We solved a freaking Amy problem. I know, it sounds like nothing to you guys standing in the corner, but, like, how about you shut up? I feel proud of myself. I solved an Amy problem. Eh, I didn't really solve it. I actually just, when I, when I got this problem, I just didn't care, and I looked at the solution, and I now I'm telling you this. So, yeah, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for dealing with this, and, uh, this was problem solving with identities, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Wait. I've always done this, but I don't know why I'm not actually going to leave. I was, okay, God, I'm just going to tell you, I, oh my, uh, so I'm just going to tell you a problem. I was thinking of telling you a problem, and then I'm going to leave, but then I thought I'm too lazy to make a whole other video on, how, on solving that problem, so I'm just going to give you the problem, and then I'm just going to solve it after, so, um, if you don't solve this problem, I'm gonna eat you. And so, yeah, solve it, please. So, yeah. Wait. Um, what problem? Oh, yeah, so now. Yeah, so. Um, it's similar to the first one I actually gave. So, it's a callback. So, sine of A plus sine of B. Um,. So that's equal to sine of A plus sine of B equals root 3 over 2 and cosine of A cosine plus cosine of A cosine of B equals the square root of one half. Oh, and sorry, no, this is equal to the square root of three halves. So now last time I had cosine of a minus cosine of b, this time I'm spicing it up a lot, and yeah, so, so actually, fun fact, this is also from Comica or whatever, so yeah, maybe, 
I don't know, maybe one of them was just, uh, like, I, I bet one of them was a real one, and then the other one was just spiced up. So, yeah. Solve it. I'm waiting. So, yeah, let's do this. So, so I'm solve this thing. Uh, we can't do the same thing we did last time. This time, we have new eyes. I mean, it's not like we cut our eyes out and we got new eyes. I mean, like, we have a new vision, I guess, or whatever. So now, I'm going to multiply them out. That's what I feel like doing. So now, if you multiply them, we get sine of A, cosine of A. Plus sine of A, cosine of B. The nice thing about having something plus something times something plus something is that there's not no need to worry about the signs or, oh my God, i mean the symbols not the signs so yeah now that plus inside so at first outside inside sine of b cosine of a outside or last oh yeah is equal to the square root oh my god what's happening Oh, stop, please. Uh, square root of 1 half times square root of 3 half. That's the square root of 3 halves times 1 half. That's the square root of 3 over 4. This is, that's the square root of 3 over over 2. So that's nice. Um. So, all right. Now, um, we can pair these up. Sine of A, cosine of A, sine of A, B, cosine of B. That's equal to, um, yeah, you know what that's equal to. That's not equal to anything. So now, sine of A cosine of B, sine of B cosine of A, that is equal. <sighs> that's equal to um, the sine of A plus B. So the sine of A plus B. Sine of A plus B. Um, hmm. Plus that. How, how will I deal with that? Well, we know that 2 sine of A cosine of b plus 2 sine of b cosine of b, or sine of b cosine of b or god 2 sine of a to cos 2 sine of a cosine of a is equal to the sine of 2a 2 sine of b cosine of b is equal to or wait not not, not the 2 here the 2 over here so yeah that's gonna be equal to yeah sine 2b So we're gonna have um so that means that sine of a cosine of a is actually just equal to the sine of two a over two. And the same thing with the b. Nice, we have family of signs and we don't know what they have to do with them. So we're gonna multiply by two on both sides just to just to um, ignore the fact that they exist. And so So yeah, now we have sine of 2a, sine of 2b, so nice. Now, what the heck can we do with this stupid thing? So, um, oh yeah, we also have the 2 sine there. Um, um, uh, hmm. Uh, what do we do? Oh, uh, I'm just gonna leave it to it. Please try it out. So, um, sign of a sign of. Oh wait, we have a plus. So now that's equal to root three. Um. So now. Huh. We can sum the product. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh yeah, I'm just gonna use sum the product because why not? So now that is actually just equal to two sine of a plus b, right? 
plus sine of a to a plus sine of two b is equal to two times the sine of adding uh, if you add them you get two a plus two b which is a plus b or, or oh, two a plus two b over two which is a plus b. So yeah, that times a cosine of 2a minus 2b over 2, which is a minus b. So nice, now we have a party of a minus b. So what the heck do we do? By the way, it's equal to root 3, just so you know. Uh, how can we get a minus b? Well, if we were to go original approach and square them and add them, we'd actually get... Um, I'm not gonna write it all out because I hope you guys can look back and see what happens. We actually just get 2 plus, right, because we get the sine squared and cosine squared and all that. And then we're gonna get, um, yeah, the ugly parts. So now 2 sine of A, sine of B, oh, yeah, 2 times sine of A, sine of B, plus instead of minus, oh god, I hate when that happened. Cosine of A, cosine of B. So now that's equal to um two. So now boom, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, bada. So now instead of plus cosine of A plus B, you have cosine of A minus B. Oh yeah, let's do this. So now that's equal to zero. So A minus B equals ninety. So they yeah, had ninety degrees. So now we can use that. Um. So now yeah, what's nice with that is that. So the plus is minus, so cosine of 90. Actually, we don't need to find a minus b. We know that cosine of a, mi a minus b is 0, so cosine of a minus b is 0, so this whole thing is 0. So that means that this whole thing is eliminated. So that means that 2 sine of a plus b equals root 3. So that means that sine of a plus b. Yes, that means the sine of uh, a plus b equals root 3 over 2, which means that a plus b, oh, by the way, I don't know if I said that, I'm trying to look for a plus b, so yeah, um, a plus b, my friends, you're not my friends, I don't have friends, is equal to 60 degrees, oh yes, so beautiful, so yeah, um, let's keep the spice alive, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Th these were. This was problem solving. The identities. Hopefully, this was helpful to y'all. To y'all peeps, guys. And so wait. I got my answer wrong. What the actual heck? What happened? So now wait. What? I got A plus B equals 60 degrees. So the, I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. Okay, then. Well, oh, yeah. We also know that A plus B could also be 120. Right? So now... So now, yeah, um... Oh yeah, if A minus B equals 90, and A plus B equals 60, then 2A equals 150, so A equals... Seven. Wait, what? I'm so confused. Yeah, so... If it were equal to 60, we add them. That means that A equals 75 degrees. So yeah, that's nice. And then B, remember to check your answers, guys. So yeah, this, this is one of those things. Oh my god, I actually almost fell for it. So yeah, so now B equals add them, subtract them. Huh. Yeah, so now if you subtract them, um, we get negative 2B equals 30. Oh, oh, yes! Now I see what happened. Okay, if you subtract them, you actually get uh, uh, B equals um, negative 15. So they have to be 
I don't know if I said this, but they have to be cute. And I don't know about you, but negative 15 ain't a cute. Um, actually, I, didn't, I just didn't feel like putting this in the problem, but, so, that's my fault, I agree. Whenever you have these kind of constraints, do not ignore them. I notice that now, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I really am. So now, you subtract, if, not, uh, if you were to subtract and you get negative 2b equals 30, so b equals negative 15, so that's not possible. We also notice that the sine of eight, the sine of theta equals sine of uh, 180 minus theta, so it can be 180 minus 60, 120 degrees. That would work out. If this is 120, then this, if you were to add them, you'd get 210. So, uh, oh God, we're like, oh God, that's that's above 180. Is 2a gonna be below 180? Divide, you get um, wait. Sorry, no, you get, if you add them, you get, yeah, 210, divide by 2, you get 105. That's not a cute, but it's, sorry, no, I don't, I didn't say it was a cute. I meant to say it's less than 180. So, yeah, 105 is less than 180. Um, so now, yeah, so A equals 105 degrees, and B equals, um, B equals um subtract them. We get um, I think forty five, right? So no, sorry, no. What uh, just subtract them? You get negative two. B equals negative thirty. So B equals fifteen degrees this time. So that's nice. We actually just solve for A and B. We didn't. That's that's not what they were asking for, but it's a good way to check. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, remember follow the instructions. Look at it carefully and yeah oh my god this video is a lot longer than i thought so yeah um problem solving goodbye